All right, hello, my name is Gina Walner. I am the Dean at Bay College West Campus. Um, and today we're doing our virtual career panel. We're continuing it. Um, the topic is entrepreneurship and owning your, owning your own business. Uh, the purpose of these panels is to educate our students and the community on different fields of interest. And the folks on our panel today, we have Eden Cadell, the owner of Moose Jackson Cafe. Give a little wave, woo -hoo. Um, Kate Pearson, owner and stylist of, at The Good Earth Salon. And Steve Roll, pharmacist and owner of TDS Pharmacies. All three of these businesses are located in Iron Mountain, Michigan. So, go so Dickinson County. <laughs> <laughs> so, like other ones, we're going to get things kicked off with just kind of hearing a little bit about each of our panelists before we jump into our questions. So, Kate, why don't you get us started? Okay. Um, my name is Kate Pearson. I own the Good Earth Salon in Iron Mountain, Michigan, as Gina stated. I am a 2003 graduate of Kingsford High School. I graduated from the Douglas J. Aveda Institute in East Lansing in 2005. I worked at a salon um, in Marquette, Michigan for eight years after that, then a, another Aveda salon in Iron Mountain area for three years after that before opening the Good Earth. And um, one thing about me that maybe people would find interesting, I don't know, I find it pretty interesting, is that I'm really into the um, diving into personality types because I feel like it helps me run my business and manage relationships within my personal life as well. So I'm a huge advocate for the 16 Myers-Briggs 16 personality type test for my employees, as well as finding out what Enneagram people are and um, also finding out what people's love languages is. And I kind of like to educate myself on that stuff um, for my life. So I find it very interesting. There you go. That's awesome. We can talk about that sometime. <laughs> I okay. like that stuff too. Steve, how about you? So, yeah, my name is Steve Roll. I grew up in Channing. So I'm kind of a local. People all my life, I graduated from North Dickinson. I um, went to Michigan Tech for two years and did my pre-pharmacy, which is kind of unusual. Um, most people don't go up there for pre-pharmacy. Um, and then I transferred to Ferris, where I completed my degree in pharmacy at their pharmacy school. I worked for a couple of years in Lansing. I did a residency in hospital pharmacy down there. Then I came back, worked for at Dickinson Hospital for a couple of years, for about a year and a half. And that's when, then I came over and started working for TDS for the drugstore in like 1989. I think it was in like, in the, and it was in like about 2000 where I bought into the, into the business. And Wow. Yeah. Any interesting fact you want to share about yourself? <laughs> Our grandpa. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's a wonderful fact. Yes, it, it is. is. All right, Eden, take us up, wrap us up on the intros. Okay. Uh, my name is Eden Cadell, and I was born actually on the West Coast, San Francisco. I graduated from high school downstate Michigan. Um, I've kind of lived on every coast and I met my husband, which brought me to this area. Although my father and his side of the family, they've all retired up this way. So my brother actually graduated from Marquette and went to Northern and everything. And I love living in the UP. I consider myself a complete transplant and from here now. Um, I went to Michigan State, but I finished school down in Florida at a small private school. And um, when I moved here from Seattle, which was kind of coffee Mecca at the time, um, I was in marketing. I was working for a running shoe company and I didn't know what I was gonna do having moved here. And when I thought of going into marketing publications and stuff, that seemed a little more daunting. So we didn't really have a coffee shop and thus came the Moose Jackson idea. And it's really been a gift to me every, will be 23 years in April. And, wow. you know, I know a panel of like, it's a question that's, learning things, but owning your own business and being an entrepreneur as Kate and Steve, it's just, you know, I do, I do think it takes a certain type of individual because I think some business owners think they work so hard. And then some, you know, like myself, I think I work hard, but I think I hardly work at all because I really love, you know, what we do and you're growing or you're changing and um, something to add on to Kate for her management style, which I find interesting. Like, I'd like to hear more about that, but I also, too, I had a mentor. He was our CFO at Brooks Sports, my company I work for. And 
they weren't micromanagers. They were a European company. And I really believe in like empowering my staff. So I'm not one to huddle over one. You hope you train them enough and let them add their own creativity and input so then they feel more a part of it. And I'm a chatter. So I think that's probably all I need to say about me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nope, that was perfect. All right, we're gonna jump into the questions. And like I said, um, we'll have, We'll have one person kind of own it first, but I, you know, I think I want to hear from other folks and we'll, we'll just manage our time the best we can and speed things up if we have to. Um, so Kate, why did you start your business? Um, you're lucky I'm a fast talker. I can get through a lot. So um, you told me that you wanted honesty when it came to this today. So to be honest with you, it has a lot to do with my own pride. Um, there was a few comments. My family's always been super supportive of what I've wanted to do, but there was a few comments throughout my life of, from people asking, can you make a living doing hair? Um, is there any room for growth once you're to, to a certain level of stylist? And when I did get to a certain level of, of stylist, I did want to grow. So I found that that was the only way that I could see the, the growth happening and also um, where I wanted to be leveling up and financially and in different areas. So the growth and the pride really were a big part of it. But all in all, at 13 years old, I told my mom I wanted to make my own decisions. And so at the time that couldn't happen. But a little bit later on in life, when I finally was able to make my own decisions, I, I just jumped on it. Um, I don't really think too hard or long about many decisions in my life. And I decided I wanted to open a salon and I went to somebody and asked how I got started and they gave me a few pointers and I found a building and I bought it and I moved into the upstairs and I just got going. I guess the last part of the reason why I opened is because I had worked in two different places before owning my own salon and I wanted to supply a place where maybe three to five other stylists could have a really great atmosphere, make a really good living commission wise. Um, and really love where they work and love doing what they do where they work because I felt like that was needed. And um, so far I don't have any turnover with my girls. I've been open for eight years and I pretty much have everybody that's been hired with me. So I guess I must be doing something right in, in that way. But I, I really wanted to supply a place that people could come and do hair and love what they do and love where they work. That's awesome. Stephen. Eden, do you want to add to, you know, for you guys, what was the reason that you started your business? Oh, um, I think it was just finding something. I'm kind of, uh, I need to be busy. I need a purpose to my day. And I just didn't know what other career path I was going to go. And I like a project. I'm like best when there's a lot to do or something to do. So I think I just opened my, and then I think, you know, there was a need for a hub in Iron Mountain. 23 years ago, there really wasn't a coffee shop or anything like it. And it just didn't seem that daunting. It was just, this can't be that hard. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I can figure this out, so. <laughs> you know, Same. It, and my, my story is a little bit different because I worked for the business and then I ended up buying the business. But you know, some of that reason was, I was young and I was an energetic and I was putting all this myself into this, this business that wasn't mine. And I, and I thought if I'm going to continue doing this and I'm going to continue working this hard, I need more say, and I need more, I know maybe I'm controlling, but <laughs> I, I, I want, I want to direct this ship a little bit more than I am right now. And um, so then when the opportunity came, I, you know, I jumped on it and. You know, just, I want to add one thing. One thing I noticed just with the three of us is that, Kate, because she wanted to grow me, I need to be busy and be creative. You, you wanted more control. And I think that is what an entrepreneur, you know, at times when I've counseled younger people in college, when they ask to interview or it's always that, you know what I mean? You need to believe in yourself, your idea. And I do think there's an air of confidence that we all carry mm -hmm. as entrepreneurs because I can just do it better than someone else maybe. And I know that sounds kind of very good, but it is on true. It too. Yeah. You know, it's right. yours. Um, well, I think it's a necessary you know. trait. Yeah. yeah. In, the 16, yourself. in the 16 personality type quiz, um, horribly enough, <laughs> we probably all fall under the same personality type, which is nicknamed the commander, because <laughs> it's um, all about reaching goals, setting goals, reaching goals, having confidence, like we exude confidence. Um, so it's really interesting to find out like what personality type you are and read about yourself because entrepreneurs, most of them or 
a large majority of them fall underneath that one 16 personality type. That makes sense. Interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's really important for team dynamics for sure. Right. Um, so Eden, you answered what education, you know, you had, um, but you know, a lot of the folks listening to this, where are they gonna be um, college students or high school students? And um, I think a, a big question a lot of uh, students might have interest in starting their own business is, you know, what do I go to school for? Should I even go to school? Like, how do you use any kind of, you know, the education that you did receive in your business? And, um, you know, do you feel like that has helped you succeed? Well, you know, I'm always, I'm an advocate of education and of college education, but especially in today's world, that's ever changing. There's such a new dynamic to the trade industry. And all I think, I just want to say quickly for college is, is I feel like all college does is show the business world that you are capable of setting a goal and reaching it, that you're teachable, that you have desire, you know, but does, did an education help me? I mean, I was a liberal arts major, so I spent a lot of time studying English lit and literature and, you know, women's stuff. So, but I also took a lot of business classes too. And I think you don't necessarily need a college education, but you certainly, that just broadens your perspective. It makes you a better communicator. It shows tenacity for research papers and things like that. But, you know, I never want to discourage someone that maybe might not finish college or go to college because I'm always a proponent to go. It's just, you have that your whole life and it just makes you well-rounded, but you don't necessarily need it, but it's never hurts to be educated. You know, it just broadens your mind. It just makes you that much better, that much more capable of making decisions. So did my education help me? I'll always say yes, yes. Kate, Steve, do you, either of you wanna to add to that or you know, pull from that at all? Oh, I, I'm not sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead, Kate. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm I'm not a good one to ask this to because I do not have a degree. Um, I I don't have any education. I don't have a college education. I just I have the um, cosmetology degree through the institute that I went to. My father was really huge on me going to four years of business classes. Um, to get a, ba a better background for business. And I do wish that I would have accomplished that because of the um, challenges that I was faced with the first two years with the salon. I think I would have had a, a much better, <laughs> I would have had a much better, um, I, I would have had better knowledge of, of the things that were coming before they actually happened to me had I go to business school. Sure. But you know what, um, no, Kate? I don't even know if that's true because I don't know that college really prepared for me all the licenses I had to get or, you know, yeah. your, you know, your $10,000 piece of equipment breaks down, you know, what, sure. I mean, that does. Right. So, and you're a perfect example of someone with, you know, your hard work, work ethic. So if we're talking to college students or kids attending classes, yeah. it's a perfect example. Like you, to look you know, at I would never want to discourage anybody from college. Right. right. I guess the only reason that I did not go was because I knew that eventually I would have to pay all of that back. <laughs> and the you got trained school, though, Kate. Like you went to school uh, for your craft. Right. So. Exactly. And so I I figured it out, and I feel very fortunate to have done so. I I just um, I think that college is definitely the right route to go. In the business courses, obviously, give you something to stand on. There's value. So. Steve, how about you? Well. I mean, college prepared me to be a pharmacist, but it didn't prepare me to be a business owner. I mean, sure. not in the least, you know, and um, in, in the way I kind of figured it out as I went, probably made some mistakes I wouldn't have, but I didn't, you know, I didn't take many business classes. I couldn't, you know, I, our schedule was pretty rigid. And um, so you come out with a pharmacy degree and then you got an and that that's changed a little bit, but that's always been something that's been discussed at, you know, in pharmacy schools and stuff like, are, are sure. we really preparing any of these people to really run their own businesses? Yeah, that makes sense. Steve, you have the next question. And um, what is the best thing about running your own business? And what is the worst thing about it? Well, I kind of addressed this at the beginning a little bit. The best thing is you control your own destiny. I, I mean, that's truly is the, the best thing, you know, the harder that you work, probably, you know, the more you put in, the more you're going to get out. Um, another thing I like is the flexibility. You know, I, I you work hard and you work long hours, but you can contr control those hours a little bit. You know, if um, I mean, I, I owned my business when my kids were still young. And if, you know, I didn't miss much 
much because, but I might have had to work later. I might have to come back after supper and do paperwork or something like that. But I had some flexibility that probably I wouldn't have had if I worked for somebody else. Um, and, and on the other, and maybe that's some people that might be the worst part of it. I mean, you're responsible, you know, the buck stops here. So you got to get the work done sooner or later right. and, and you're responsible for it. And the other thing that's a little bit hard is if you have employees, I have quite a few employees, sometimes it's hard, you know, a lot of things rests on you. Like, you know, like the business has to do well. I think my business has to do well because it's supporting other people and it's supporting their families and their insurance and all, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, there's a little bit of added stress that comes with that, where if you just work for somebody, you're not quite, you're not worried about that, but um, it's worth it. <laughs> you know, it, it's worth it because you, like I said, you kind of control your own destiny. Kate Eden, do you guys want to hop on that one for you guys? Echo what Steve said, or maybe it's a little different for you. Um, I forgot the question. Best and worst? Yeah, what's the best yeah. thing and worst thing about running your own business? I think best is just, it's just pride. I love my cafe. I love what I do. I love my employee. You know, it's just, you know, you the novelty wears off. Like every now and then I forget that I created it you know, 23 years ago, because it just it becomes effort, not effortless, but it just runs itself after a while. And although I have a great staff and like Kate, we get like the college turnover because they're baristas and things like that, or kids go away to school. But, um, you know, I've had staff and, you know, seven, whatever it is, but um, employees, because I have 14, I think that's at times can be the hardest keeping everybody on the same page consistent, motivated, you know, I like everybody to be self-sufficient, but go ahead, Kate. I, yeah, along with those two answers, the most, um, the best thing for me is it's super fulfilling. The worst thing for me, I think, is that um, plans are only plans. My dad used to say plans are only plans until you have kids. And I added on to that, or you own a business because there have been multiple times where we've decided to go to Marquette for a night and got a hotel room um, for our family. But then all of a sudden the hot water heater breaks or there's water all over the basement and you don't end up going because that takes first priority. Also, when things happen with your employees, personal things, um, one of my stylist grandmother uh, out in Washington was sick and she had to leave for six weeks. So it, it then takes on, you take on the role of having to go through that person's schedule and reschedule six weeks of clients and explain kind of what's going on with them because you care about them and because you, um, you're the umbrella over this team of people, you help them out when they need to be helped. And so everything does kind of fall on you. And I think that that's one of the hardest parts um, is that you never fully leave. You're always there. 100 percent so don't you think kate with that when you're addressing like your employees and their problems and stuff don't you feel though i mean it becomes like a family and you you certainly share in their their disappointments and their sorrows but you also get to share in their joys oh you know, yeah like, like when your employees oh. has a baby or they you know or they get Absolutely. married or something it's like it's like just having a really big family you know? yeah and in it the really beginning when things happened, I would get so stressed out about it. And how am I going to do this? Or is this going to work out? And now my heart doesn't even skip a beat. It's just like, well, it'll work out somehow. I'll sit down for an hour at the salon and I'll work on this right now. And then when I have time later, I'll work on this. And it always works out. Even the water in the basement, it always gets fixed. So like, it's not a worry to me anymore. Well, I think you have to be able as a business owner let things, you know, water off the duck's back or whatever that saying is, because, you know, when it's crazy and there's catering and lying to the door and everything's, you know, everybody's like, I, I always tell the staff, you know, if I'm the owner and we're not, we're just selling, you know, cafe, you know, sandwiches and so in an hour, this will all be over, you know, mm -hmm. this rush, this problem, this, you do the best you can, you know, try your hardest, smile on your face and you move forward. And it's, I think that's team building, that's your staff coming together. And those are the moments that as crazy as they are, I love those moments. Yeah. I love yeah. when it's so crazy fun. and then you, it all comes together. That's awesome. All right, Kate, what's this, since you're into the personality types, this is a perfect one for you. Um, what skill sets must a small business owner possess? Oh gosh. Your opinion. 
this was the hardest one when I was writing down my answers for me to try to come up with because I was like, what skill sets do I possess? I would like to say I'm super organized, but that's not true. Um, <laughs> one good skill is that I know how to delegate. So like it, in the beginning, it was just myself and Courtney. And then I brought in a full-time receptionist. And so then I took, I worked 60 hours behind the chair in the beginning. And then I would train this receptionist in between in order to start taking on some things for me. And then the more that I trained that person, then the more I could just concentrate on being behind the chair. And then all of a sudden my hours behind the chair started to dwindle because then I hired a third stylist and then I hired a fourth stylist, but all the while giving this uh, full-time receptionist more and more duties, which would take things off of my plate. Um, so that was definitely, I guess it's not a skill, but it's- um, I think something that's a skill. Yeah. To be to able delegate. to delegate correctly is very important. And I am beyond um, direct. So I think that's a really good skill to have. I hope, I don't know. It could be good. It could be bad. I never have, I never, the girls know exactly what I expect. And I don't feel like I ever put it harshly. I do regular salon meetings. I say, you guys, what's up with this? Um, I never sugarcoat anything, but a lot of them have come to me and told me how much they appreciate that because they always know what's expected of them and they can go from there. Um, I, I don't hold back on anything. So if one little thing is going wrong, I'm like, hey, we need to change it this way. And then we just keep on rolling. So those are a few things that are important for my business. Eden or Steve, you want to weigh in? Um, what do you think are some important skill sets um, a small boat, small business owner must possess? Well, just to add on to Kate, you know, I'm one of those sometimes, and I, I work on it constantly as a, well, not so much anymore because now I have it down, but if I can do it quicker myself and better, I just want to have it done. But that really doesn't get you where, anywhere as a business owner. So like I said, I model off, you know, self, you know, everybody's self-sufficient. The cafe can run itself without me because you girls all know I trust you. You see my vision. But um, I think you have to have a strong vision of what you expect. Like everybody, I always tell people, like, we're never allowed to say no at the cafe. And, I, you know, it got to the point where I said, before you think of uttering the word no, you should picture me in the back of your head. <laughs> I am the only one that says no, because otherwise it's too busy. You know, we can't deliver. We can't do this. You know, it's too many times. But you know, you lead by example. And I try my best to always, I'm not asking you to do anything that I haven't done or don't do. And um, you really need to have uh, a strong vision and a strong sense of confidence to lead that and, uh, you know, be able to expect that from your employees. Steve, anything to add? Well, I don't know if it's a skill set, but you got to be willing to work. You know, you got to be willing to work hard. And like Kate said, you got to be willing to mop up the water in the basement if you need to. You're not going to be able to afford to call somebody every time, you know, this happens or this happens or whatever. You know, you're going to have to 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 learn to do some stuff and just to bite the bullet and do it. And so if you're afraid of work, it ain't going to work out. Yeah, for sure. I was going to I was going to add that one if you didn't. I was going to say, I think you guys are all really hard workers, too. <laughs> um, all right, Eden. What were some challenges you encountered when you first um, started your own business and how did you overcome those challenges? Um, you know, I think when you're opening your own business, it's all new and like Steve was young, you know, working and then you, Kate too, like there's no one-on-one book of licenses or, you know, reaching out. So it's really just, that's where it just takes, you know, I think your care, I just, I just know I can do anything if I set my mind to it because everybody has to be taught something. So challenges were just the unknowns. It was a constant unknown one after the other. And um, you just have to be able to persevere through those or figure it out and everything, you know, be patient with that or be tenacious with that. But challenges, it's just, and be, you know, also too, we were opening a coffee shop selling back then three or four dollar coffees and people are used to spending a dollar and I think challenges is really staying true to your vision because everybody wants to tell you what you need to carry what you need to do how it should be or you know our town being so small and you know I, I'm always open to new ideas but I really try and stay true to what I want to do 
because, you know, they wanted me open on Sundays or into the evening or, you know, just everything. And I think a challenge is always trying, not getting off track of what you set out to do. That's good. Steve, Kate, how about you guys? Like the first year you started, what were some of the biggest challenges or the biggest challenge you encountered? I've got a whole load of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, taxes. <laughs> like um, somebody didn't tell me that you pay out this much in payroll and then the next month there's like all these payroll taxes due on the 15th and then on the 20th is your retail sales tax and then you have like um, all this withholding and then you have oh, yeah. all of this uh, unemployment and then you have like the, the amount that comes out in taxes and as you start doing better and better and better and that amount gets higher and higher and higher and you start to, as those numbers are coming out, you're just like, what, what is this even for? Again, didn't go to business classes. Maybe that would have helped me. Um, another thing is like having a good CPA because the challenges in the beginning for me had a lot to do with that, but also when to spend money and when to save money. Because as the money's coming in, you want to put it back into your business. You need write-offs and all of that. That whole balancing act for me was really, really tough to get used to. Um, it, it took me quite a few years to realize I need to put the, this profit back into my business. I need to have this um, as, a, as a good write-off. And then another thing was just the management of people for me in the beginning. I wanted to be everyone's friend. You can't be everyone's friend. And right now I am everyone's friend in the salon because we've all been together for almost eight years. So we've really learned um, how to have that boss friendship relationship um but in the beginning I was trying too hard to be a friend and I was not being a boss and so I had to learn that the hard way twice and that was really challenging for me as well it's a huge challenge I think we I talk think about that a lot in our leadership enormous. is just you know you yeah. used to be buddies with someone and you're going you know and, and then all of a sudden you have to have a hard conversation that's that's a hard thing to do for sure for sure. And, and if you take, in my situation where I took over a business, probably the hardest challenge in the beginning was, was breaking through that thing of with employees that, well, this is the way we always did it, or this is the way we want, you know, this is how it's always been done. Well, yeah, we're not going to do that anymore. You know, we're going to try to switch, you know, and because you have your own ideas and, and you also, you know, you, you don't want mutiny on the bounty either. You don't want everybody quitting either. So it's a, it's a balance, you know, it is a balance. Let's think about that idea, but maybe we could do it this way or, you know, you, you can't be too strong either and just say, well, it's my way or the highway because maybe it'll be the highway and then <laughs> you'll be stuck. Mm -hmm. so. For sure. Those are all really good, 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 good points. All right, Steve, please share with us the network of people and organizations that helped you um, start or purchase your business, purchase your business. Well, I, um, I leaned a lot on at the time Flurry and Sigler because they were our accountants and um, you know they did a lot of cash flow stuff for me and probably not as much as maybe I, I, I should have done but you know like he said you need to a good accountant because there's just there's just so much stuff you don't know and you don't realize you know with taxes and and all that other stuff where you know you don't get to keep all the money you make unfortunately um, and so that and then also the pharmacy now has come a long way there's different organizations that really can help somebody purchase a business or at least look at it um but i would suggest if somebody was really really looking at a business is to is to go talk to somebody that's running a similar business and and go out of town you know you don't want to go talk to your competitor down yeah. the street they might not be giving you the right advice. doing things but go <laughs> somewhere you know go somewhere where so, where you know where somebody's doing it well and they'll usually help you i mean they usually you know that they, they they like to talk about it's their in business. the up or northern wisconsin they'll totally help you yeah, right they'll say oh come on <laughs> in you know like sit down have a beer and i'll tell you about it no <laughs> but you know go find a you know somebody that's doing what you're doing and doing it well and chances are you can learn from them you know i think that some of the best advice you know i originally opened up my business with maddie mccormick my partner still best of friends just um you know i think owning your own business like i said it either you think it's a lot of work or you know when you're type a personality it's hard to let things go 
you know, I'm more of the type like C personality, but anyway, talking to other businesses, Maddie and I traveled all around Northern Wisconsin and the UP and visited shops. We went to seminars, you know, from Colorado to LA, like all over for that year. It took about a year and a half, I think, before the building was built and everything of just, but it's invaluable information to talk to another business that's doing your same thing, that doesn't mind sharing. And so that's why, you know, too, I always try and help anybody that's interested in opening their own business to encourage them and, you know, tell them the things that were hard for you, but it's invaluable, Steve, I agree, to talk to someone in the same field, you know, from anything, what was, you know, setting up your salon, setting up your coffee shop, your pharmacy, whatever. Anything to add, Kate? Oh. <laughs> Are you waiting for me? Yeah. Uh, everyone over at the First National Bank was incredible for me. I had so much help over there. And then Lisa Fatante, who's my CPA, she was the one that helped me with all the Michigan.gov stuff, all of the setup of the licenses. Um, I did not go and talk to any other businesses or any other salons. I, get, I guess that was the prideful part of me, is I just thought that I could do it without help. But that got me into a little bit of trouble, too. But... The most help, and I'm not just saying this for good points, but the most help did come from my family and my husband. I met Mike the week I bought the building and I couldn't have done it without him. Um, and he says to me all the time, what would you have done if you didn't meet me? Because you had all uh, millions and millions of plumbing and, and um, just carpentry work and what would you have done? And I was like, I don't know, I would have figured it out, but thank God I met you. And then my <laughs> father... He retired at 54 the year I bought the building. I was 26 and he retired and he did most of the painting and ripped up flooring. Um, so my, my mom was there putting all, uh, 16 boxes of Aveda on the shelf. So everyone really came together. And if I have to say that, sure. that, that was definitely my support group. Cool. All right, I'm gonna, Kate, I'm gonna have you kick us off, but um, as a business owner, just to, and we'll keep it this part one short and sweet, but try and run through you know, what, what does a typical day look like for each of you, starting with you, Kate? Um, I usually wake up five o'clock in the morning. I have two kids that both get up at that time. I check my emails. I do my online banking. I get back to some people if I can. And then um, after I get the kids all set up and off to daycare and I go to work, I'm usually at work about an hour early and sometimes just for morale sometimes just to talk to the girls about their weekend or certain things going on in their life other times to write out bills and and talk with amanda the receptionist about things that need to be done that week um then i'm behind the chair anywhere from six to eight hours uh four days a week and then um during that time it's also talking to people about advertising talking to uh, making orders helping amanda with inventory um there's a lot of things that go on. Some days I'm just behind the chair and then I go home and I eat dinner and the day is done. Other days, it seems like there's about 15 other business things that need to happen because I either put something off too long or it just comes all at once. That's cool. my day. Perfect. Steve, go. Yeah. <laughs> I usually try to get here at seven, you know, and, and I agree with that. It's, it's nice to have a little bit of time in the morning to kind of figure things out before the, the day gets too often going too much, but I like to say there's no typical day, you know, no day is typical, everyone's different, but that's, that's really another thing that's kind of nice about having your own business is you don't, it's not monotonous ever, but, um, so I usually, yeah, work a couple hours at my desk in the morning or do, you know, I do, right, the advertising, I'll, you know, some of that, talk to my accountant, all that kind of stuff, and then, then I'll go work in the pharmacy for a while. There's some days that I'll go, like yesterday, I was in Crystal Falls for the whole day, tomorrow, I'm going to be in Norway at the pharmacy for the whole day, I kind of enjoy that once in a while because then I'm just a pharmacist kind of, and I don't have to, I can kind of shut everything else out. Um, but yeah, so I kind of bought between, you know, management stuff and pharmacy stuff. Cool. All right, Eden. Um, so I have, you know, been at the cafe in the beginning from the moment we opened till we close. I'm fortunate now that I'm not actually on the schedule, but I'm here every day and my mornings, you know, I talk to the cafe every morning, but I do like my emails, ordering, catch up on whatever at home. And then I usually come in mid morning. And like I said, I'm not scheduled anywhere. So if the kitchen needs help or if up front needs help, or if I'm just, you know, doing inventory myself or, you know, there's always emails and bills and payrolls and stuff. But um, 
I kind of, I mean, I, I love it in the way that I feel so blessed is that I can spend an hour talking to a customer because, you know, I'm always needed. And everyone says, well, the cafe runs better when you're here. And it probably does, but they can run it by themselves. And I think that takes time. I and mean, I'm, I'm going on 23 years. So that's a big thing. But what is my typical day like? It's just, you know, in the cafe, like Steve, it's, I don't know why one day is busier than the next or why everybody comes in this Tuesday and not next Tuesday. And 23 years later, I don't, rain, does that bring them in? Does sunshine? <laughs> it just doesn't matter. Like it's just, you know, and that's the thrill of it. I thrive on chaos and, you know, to create the order, so. Did you feel like when you were first starting the cafe though, that, I mean, when you were first starting it, like that first year or two, you were there all day, all the time? Oh, well, first many years. Yeah. And then, you know, Maddie and I split it. And then when I bought her out, I was here, you know, from start to finish. Sure. So as an owner, you should be there. You just should. It runs better in our small towns. People like to see the owner. You know, I'm always a little bit like Dave Cashton because I love First National too. He's like, must be a busy day if Eden's behind the counter. Like, you know, <laughs> which I'm always a little insulted, to be honest, because like I am here. I'm just not always like right here. <laughs> Right. And I'm kind of in that position too. I'm probably similar age to you. That's what it sounded and like. And I'm not on the schedule as much behind the counter. And people come in and say, oh, Steve's working today? Well, Steve works every day. But, you know, <laughs> you know but it's kind of right. a nice position to be in too. And, and I can kind of do the same thing if I want to spend some time or sure. do something with a customer. You know, I'm not... You can I get that the, time with I your customer too. I can be scheduled too. the yeah. better, you know. That's right. Awesome. No, you guys, really cool. that sounds lovely. <laughs> You'll get there, Kate. Yeah, You'll get there. Ten more, Kate. Kate, ten more <laughs> years. <laughs> okay. Um, Eden, how important was um, your business plan when you first started? Did you make one? Did you follow it? Um, you know, I think that's you know, something that gets tossed around a lot. I did, and it seemed like a daunting task. In fact, they're still around Northern Initiatives. I had met with them, and but I think I, I want to suggest to anybody opening a business, they should do a business plan. One, your bank's going to want to see it. But two, it wasn't really that hard to write, to be honest. Like, it seems so daunting. Like, I'm never going to be able to do this. But, you know, a lot of people figuring out your target markets, figuring out the demographics, figuring out, you know, how many cups of coffee I need to sell, my hours. Like, it's good for you to see on paper, is this viable? Because if you're trying to like, oh, I'll just figure that out or I'll make it work. Not when you're talking with a large sum of money to open a business. So I strongly suggest, and if you're having trouble, there's so many resources for people to reach out to, to help you with the business plan. And especially this was 20 years ago. So now it would be even easier, but I think a business plan is kind of crucial just for you to set your own, like in that first year. Cause if you've never owned a business before, you really have no idea like taxes. I knew enough Kate, cause I am not a math person. You know, I have a sense for business, but I hired that account. I have two accountants, one that helps me monthly and one that's my big This is a because... strong theme in this. In this mm -hmm. it is, it's, <laughs> you don't want to get in trouble with the government one and two, right. yeah. you know, it's painful to watch those checks go out. So I'd rather them just figure that out and do it. For sure. So, but a business plan, yes, I think it's, it just helps guide you on what you need to do, makes you write everything out, what equipment you're going to need to buy, because all that equipment you think you have to buy, you have to buy that much more. Sure. You know, set up your counter, your building, your rent, just all that, things you wouldn't think about just trying to open it. Sure. Steve and Kate, business plan? I mean, I took over a business, so I didn't really have much of, you know, kind of, but I'm just thinking about eating. And the, the kids that are watching this, when she opened her business, there was no, she didn't have the internet. She can go search <laughs> the internet for whatever. I'm so old. I am so and old. And we're not that old. But Way to throw her under the right, bus, Steve. You, you yeah. weren't just on your computer looking yeah. on, on the internet for this stuff, right? right? No, in fact, this is how old I am. My husband bought me was like, when I had just thought about opening, it was like opening your business for dummy. There were like a set of books. these books for every the kind books. of business. <laughs> I mean, I probably still have it somewhere in my shelves because it was kind of like nostalgic. But yeah, I had to resort to books and research. Hey, how about you? I remember writing a business plan for First National Bank. I don't think I ever looked at it ever again. Sure. It was curious. not anything that I needed to, to get going. I wrote it because they asked me for it. I do, however, remember because I'm so visual writing down um, in the beginning, writing down how much my equipment loan was for all of my initial equipment, 
how much the initial Aveda order was to stock and fill up the salon and how long it would take me based off of how many cut and colors per week I could do to pay those off. So I lived upstairs and I did 60 hours a week behind the chair and I knew what I charged for a cut and color and the, the um, average that I would do in a week and how much could go towards those two big loans. And I, it, that to me was my business plan that like hung up on my refrigerator because I just worked my butt off so that I didn't have to have those hanging over my head. But as far as the business plan for the bank, I don't know, whatever. No, that was, that's a good, you good answer, get those the answer, it was good. It was there <laughs> at one point. I'm gonna have Steve start this one off, but um, I have it worded as, if you could speak to your younger self just starting out, what advice would you give to yourself? But I wonder too, is like, if, if you were mentoring someone, a high school student or a college student and starting their own business, you know, what advice would you have for them as well? Um, so with that, Steve. Probably be patient to a certain extent, and I probably didn't research things as much as I should have, but it wasn't as easy, like I said back then, and probably made some mistakes along the way that I wouldn't have needed to make. Um, so, you know, know what you don't know and don't be afraid to ask, you know, it's probably some good advice. And um, yeah, don't, you're going to make mistakes, but ask, you know, don't, don't be too cocky, you know, and think you're going to, you're opening your own business and you're going to do it your way and um you know you got to have a lot of self-confidence but you also got to know what you don't know yes Eden um I think just you know stay true to yourself and your vision you know and I, I don't necessarily have a mission statement which maybe I probably should have or if I did I can't remember what it was but it's like you should stay true to yourself and focused and just you know believe in yourself and your idea and if you don't believe in yourself enough that you can do this better than anyone else or, you know, change, bring something new, you know, make sure you're bringing something. Does the community need it? You know, will the community support it? Is, am I going to do a great job at it? And just, you know, be confident and stay true to yourself a hundred percent. And that's what being an entrepreneur is. You think you have a better idea than the way someone else is doing it. That's what entrepreneurs are. They are adding to make it easier for someone to offer a new product, to offer a new service. Like you need to be confident in your idea. You're gonna that sell something. You have to believe strongly enough that what you're doing is the 100%. best option if you expect other people to, to buy yeah. it. And like Steve said too though, like, you know, things will happen. And sometimes mistakes can be the best thing, you know, just, just like the universe, you know. If things keep going wrong, the universe is just going to keep teaching you that same lesson. Maybe so you'll meet your husband the day you, the week you build, buy your building in the universe. <laughs> See, it so was something, so pay attention. <laughs> yeah. Kate, do you want to wrap us up? Yeah. If I was mentoring anybody younger, which I feel like I just started this, which I kind of did eight years ago, but, um, I, I do, I agree with Eden a hundred percent. Like I think that passion for something leads to success. And um, I definitely feel like if you have enough passion in an industry and enough want and enough drive that you will make it happen. When I went to my parents with this big college level speech prepared, I had, um, I had everything written out on a huge, huge bulletin piece of paper about what I was going to do and how I was going to do it. And my dad, being the engineer that he is, had so many technical questions for me. And at one point, I was just like, you know, dad, I, I don't really know, but I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to buy this building. I'll live upstairs. My mortgage will be my mortgage for my business and for my living expenses. And I will work my butt off and I will figure it out. So honestly, these young kids that are so unsure of themselves, but know that they want to own a business. Like that is the biggest piece of advice that I can give, like Eden said, is you just have to know that if you have enough passion, you will make it happen. Yeah. I have goosebumps, totally true. Right, and you, but you have to do the work. I think that sometimes is you can be passionate about an idea, yeah. but you have to be, do the work. Well, and let's not kid ourselves. Not kid, when my cafe first opened, now I have people that come in after school and clean, but Maddie and I would be down here at midnight sweeping, mopping, yeah. 
Like yeah. you open a business, you are there. Because it's cool to open a business, but not all parts of it, I don't think, are super, <laughs> right. you, you know. know when, I, when I lived glamorous. upstairs and the phone downstairs in the salon would ring, it doesn't matter what time of night it was. If I heard the phone ringing, I would run down the stairs and grab it because I lived upstairs. I wanted to get every phone call and every appointment that I could. So I just yeah. I was there all the time. Awesome. It's worth it. Hey. Yeah. Well, I, I think both of you are both admirable business owners. I mean, Steve, I know how hard you work at yours and how busy your stars and Kate really like your salon just keeps growing better and better. And my hair, the new products that you keep talking about. <laughs> love, love, love. There we go. We're <laughs> plugging it. We'll plug it. Uh, yeah. No, I feel very fortunate that all three of you um, were willing, you know, you guys are all really busy and I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. Um, so with that, I'm going to wrap this up.